Welcome back to the Mount Mount Medical YouTube channel. Thanks for hanging out. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to apply the SWAT T. I this is uh, one of my favorite things on the YouTube channel. Um, if you've been around for a little bit of time, then you're going to know that I'm a gigantic fanboy for the old SWAT T. It just has a lot of different uses and all that kind of stuff. But I realized I didn't have any uh, videos on how to apply it, so I thought I'd do that now. Hang out, we're gonna talk about that next. All right guys, thanks for hanging out. If you do me a quick favor, go down below, hit that like and subscribe button. That's a free way to support me here at the channel. So if you learned something, you enjoyed the video, that's a great way to support me here at the channel. Also head over to mountmanmedical.com and check out our Yellowstone and Wind River trauma kits. And then you're gonna be ready, of course, you know, for whatever the mountain throws at you. All right, so in this one, we're going to talk about the old SWAT T and uh, how to self-apply it. Um, this is one of my favorite items for extending the usefulness of your kit. I've got another video on the channel that talks a little bit about uh, the SWAT T and all the various great things about it. Um, so if that's interesting for you, I'll drop a link to that up here and you'll be able to uh, go and watch that video. So check that out after you see this one. Um, and so this video, we're gonna talk about how to apply the SWAT T. If you get your SWAT T, you definitely wanna make sure that you're practicing with it. This is not like all of your other different types of tourniquets out there on the market. Uh, for example, I've got me a soft T tourniquet. This is an excellent windless style tourniquet. It has this little windlass on it. Whereas this is just basically a stretchy band. And the way that this works is that it stretches around and as it tightens back in on itself, it provides that circumferential pressure that we need to occlude the artery and shut off the blood supply to the bleeding um, injury, right? So pretty easy. That's pretty much all that this is. This is just a stretchy band um, on it. It will have some instructions about how to uh, apply this. Essentially, you want these tiny little rectangles to turn into squares like that. So as you pull this, let me see if I can get that light right. See how they turn into squares? That's how tight you need to rewrap in this so that you get the proper um, occlusion. So that's a kind of an example for you. This tourniquet is much easier to apply with two hands than one hand. So why don't we show you the one-handed method first, and then uh, we'll show you the two-handed method, uh, and I'll be sitting down and I'll put it on my leg. So here we go. The SWAT T stands for stretch, wrap, and tuck. So that's how you apply this tourniquet. And if you look closely on here, you could see these little rectangles kind of like coming across here, just like that. You want those rectangles to turn into these squares. So the directions on how to use it are printed right on the tourniquet itself. You can pull it and you can see that those squares expand or the rectangles expand into squares and that's how tight you need to go. So that's your go by, do you have it tight enough? Are the rectangles big squares like that? So this is the SWAT T, stands for stretch, wrap, and tuck. So that is the method that we're using to apply this tourniquet. Now, what we're going to do is apply this one-handed. And this is definitely not the tourniquet that you wanna be applying one-handed. The cat tourniquet tends to be the easiest to self-apply. That's my preferred one. If I know I'm going to be applying a tourniquet to myself, that's the one I would prefer to use. The soft tee is also pretty used, a little different technique, um, but still on those same types of lines where it's much easier to self-apply that to you one-handed than it is um, to uh, use the SWAT T. So um, that's the caveat. Now, this is still a very excellent tourniquet um, because you can put it in a lot of different places. It's a little bit cheaper. You can use it for a bunch of different things and it still works really, really well. So let's talk a little bit and show you the demonstration on how to apply this tourniquet to yourself one-handed. I'm gonna do it on my left arm and here we go. We're gonna take this tourniquet, we're gonna drape it across just underneath. Um, now you can have the writing up if you want, um, but hopefully you're practicing with this on your own and you don't really need to follow the directions on here too often. But we're just going to take this end piece and put it in our teeth. All, all the way around. And once we get that cinched down all the way around, we're gonna take it and go over the top. You wanna to try to keep this as flat as you can, but if you don't, 
not a big deal. I'm gonna stretch tight, come around, because it's hard to hold it tight. Pinch it to your shoulder, pinch it into your chest so that you're getting it all the way around. And then once you get this final bit, we're gonna take the end of that and tuck it underneath of itself. There we go. Now we got that strapped on. You check my pulse. And we're good to go. So you wanna make sure that you're pulling it nice and tight. Give yourself a little bit of room here on that last turn. You can slide it in underneath. And now you've got it stretched, wrapped, and tucked. Now this tourniquet is pretty comfortable compared to other tourniquets, um, but it, it is still uncomfortable. It's pinching down pretty good. The reason why it's more comfortable is because it has a wider surface area. This is a four inch band, so it applies that pressure over a broader surface area. That's why we wanna try to have the tourniquet as flat as possible. We don't want it to get it bunched up and narrow because a, a big portion of our bleeding control is going to come from the occlusion of that artery with a lot of pressure over top of the artery to clamp it down against that long bone or the humerus of your arm, of your upper bicep. So that's how you apply it one-handed. Not that difficult. You definitely wanna practice it. You don't wanna be trying to learn this when you need it most. So give that a shot. Holy crap, this tourniquet sucks. Gotta get this thing off. Oh, it's so secure. There we go. One of the other great things about these tourniquets is that you can just use them over and over and over again, practice in and again and again and again. They're not that expensive. So if uh, you want to buy a couple to, to practice with and to train with and to hand out as gifts, um, to important people that you like, make sure you're showing them how to use it or point them to my YouTube channel and I'll show them. Uh, but we're gonna roll this back up. We don't really need to, I guess. I just like to have it uh, rolled up every time I'm going to deploy it. Um, and then we'll set this up on my leg and we'll take a look at uh, how you might apply it to your leg. All right, setting this tourniquet up, SWAT T with two hands is of course so much easier, helps you to get a greater pull on this tourniquet. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna run this across, wrap that around, we're gonna go as high and tight as we can. Remember that if your casualty has anything in their pockets, we want to remove that so that it doesn't get in the way between the tourniquet and the casualty. All right, so we're gonna wrap once around and then this top piece, helps to keep the uh, underneath cinched down. So make sure that you get that wrapped around tight before you pull. And we're gonna come, come around, trying to maintain that this is as flat as possible. And we're gonna pull it again, nice and tight. Get that around and tuck underneath. There we go. And I'm not wearing shoes so that we can check my pulse. No pulse. Set, ready to go. So quick and easy application. Um, this is a great tourniquet. It's not the best for the securing method, right? You're just tucking it underneath on itself, but it is still a pretty substantial, uh, if you tuck it under really good, it's, it's gonna be difficult to get it back off unless you're trying. So uh, make sure you're tucking it under nice and neat. We don't want this thing unraveling on us. Make sure that you're checking this tourniquet often. I would check this tourniquet maybe a little more often than I would my cat or my soft tea if I've got time. Um, because you know that securing method isn't fantastic. It's not like that cl locking clip in the cat tourniquet where you've got the uh, time strap that comes across and keeps everything nice and neat, right? So um, you wanna make sure that you're double checking this tourniquet on the regular, especially if you're moving that casualty anywhere. If you're dragging this person away from a burning car or out of the line of fire, or whatever the case is, make sure that you're going back and double checking, make sure this tourniquet is still doing what you want it to. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Thanks for hanging out and checking out this video on the SWAT T tourniquet. This is a fantastic style, not the best, 
end all be all for tourniquets. Um, I would prefer to have a windlass style tourniquet if I know I'm going to be in a really bad situation. But if I'm just going out on the town, I want a little EDC tourniquet to kind of drop down into my pocket so that um, I can stop some bleeding if I needed to, then this is a great option. Um, it rolls up nice and neat. It's just a soft piece of rubber, so it carries really well um, and uh, an excellent item to have in your trauma kit. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. That's a free way to support me here at the channel. So if you learn something, that's a great way to help me out. And don't forget to head over to mountainmanmedical.com. Check out our Yellowstone and Wind River trauma kits, which come with a SWAT T in it. Thanks for hanging out. I'll catch you guys in the next one.